Tina Lianis Kiki to have such a beautiful. Immensely! I am lucky to have such a beautiful mom. I'm we said for back from now. It's a pity my daughter looks like my wife. Uh this is how my husband, Silas, always looks down on me and our daughter. He constantly praises his niece, Lillian, calling her adorable. I'm so disappointed in him. It's high time he got a wake-up call. I'm Myla, a working mom in my late 40s. Bella, my daughter, is a busy ninth grader, swamped with studies. Silas, an office worker in his late 40s, always comes home complaining about his stressful job. I can overlook his grumbling about work stress, but it doesn't stop there. He has a tendency to take out his frustrations on his own family. He constantly criticizes Bella and me directly. Complaining about my cooking is an everyday affair. He grapes at every meal, even though he always finishes his plate. After dinner, he complains about the house not being clean enough. He wrangles finger along the window sash and says, There's dust left. It came in right now, she's gone. It stresses me out. Then he tops it off by saying, you're such a disappointing wife. You fail at everything. He even finds fault with the way I polish glasses. It's utterly exhausting. But it doesn't stop with me. Silas is terrible to Bella too. Despite her being his own daughter, he nitpicks everything. Teenagers care about their looks, but when Bella tries a new hairstyle, he says it doesn't suit her. Just when she picked a club to join, he dismisses it as a waste of time. Even when she gets good grades, he never praises her. Just says, that's terrible. You can do better. Whenever Silas speaks, family time sour. Bella and I are fed up with him. Then one day, during a long weekend, we visited my in-law's home. In the in-laws' home, Silas's brother's family lives together. We don't visit there often. My Bell is such a kind and nice guy. Lillian is his only daughter. She is very kind and of the same age as Bella. Bella and Lillian are very close friends. But there's a problem in that family too. Lucy, the wife of my Bill, is so beautiful. I thought she was a model when I first saw her. It's hard not to wonder why she married my Bill, who is an average looking face like Silas. But she has a strong personality. Well, a bit too strong actually. Lucy always has a way of putting me down. But you know. Miley, you're really bad at makeup? Though sorry, is it just that you always look shabby no matter what? I often get compliments for my natural beauty, you know. That's just the tip of the iceberg, the least harmful of her comments. I lost to wait again, Nikki, but I just can't seem to gain, no matter what I eat. They might, you've put us on a loss of weight, haven't you? Why on earth do you eat to get like that? I was wishing, says the bus walking down to walking downtown. Someone asked me to be a model. Just. It's so annoying to turn these offers down. Ask. Do you wouldn't have that problem? Maybe I'm a lucky you. I was walking with my daughter the day. And someone mistook us for stairs. How embarrassing. Make you so embarrassing. At least you clearly look like a mom. Lucy's insults flow effortlessly, like breathing. I have to admit, she is truly beautiful, with an amazing figure and a stunning appearance. Her stories are probably true, but why does she have to look down on me every time? Each time she makes those comments, my bill says, hey that's rude, in anger, but it's like talking to a brick wall. Lucy just laughs it off, saying, but it's true. I could maybe laugh it off or let it go, but then there's something even worse. It's the worst when Silas comes in. Yeah, Mila really lacks charm, he'd say. He looks down on me. Lillian is beautiful too, inheriting all of Lucy's good genes. She's the same age as Bella, but Lillian looks more like a college student with her maturity. She's stylish and beautiful and Bella eaters her. She may resemble Lucy in looks, but thankfully her personality is more like her father's. Lillian, kind and compassionate, doesn't look down on me or Bella. Bella always says with sparkling eyes, a beauty with a good personality, isn't she the best? Lillian must be an idol to Bella. Thanks to her, Bella's become quite fashionable herself. While she doesn't wear makeup, she's become more stylish within the limits of the school dress code. She spends maybe 30 minutes in front of the mirror every morning before school. It's helped her avoid oversleeping at least. I don't mind visiting my in-laws because my in-laws and Beale are nice people, but Lucy and Silas's attitudes are the problem. By them, my Belnor, I can get through to them. 
I wonder if there's a good way to make these two change their tactless ways. Before I could come up with a solution, we visited my in-laws' home again. Oh, Mila, have you aged again? You have more wrinkles than me? If we walk together, people might think I'm younger. Only three minutes after entering the in-laws' home, Lissy looked down on me again. It looks like it's going to be another dreary visit. Mila, do you take care of your skin? You shouldn't skimp on moisturizer. When I go to the cosmetics counter, the clerks always compliment my skin. I already felt tired of listening to her again. I focused my attention on Bella as I became increasingly fed up. Bella and Lillian were having a study session together, spreading out their textbooks. They had to meet now as they'll soon be too busy with exam preparations to visit. We likely won't come here for a while, so the next time they'll meet will be after exams. That's why Bella came with me today. As I glanced at their notebooks, I saw an array of numbers that made no sense. I used to be able to help with their studies up to elementary school, but high school math is beyond me. Did I really study this stuff? I wondered. It looked like Bella was teaching Lillian. Bella is good at math, and Lillian's eyes sparkled as she looked at Bella. Oh, Bella, you explained things so well. I've never really understood math until now. Redshins, you're even better than my teacher. Bella, praised by her beloved cousin, couldn't hide her pleasure. She blushed and modestly said, No way! I'm not that good! But not everyone was pleased. Boot, who see who always has to be first, with her daughter second and everyone else below, couldn't resist butting in. I see! Alone! Slee! I this be? I try am I? Fain girls are always good at plain studies. And there was someone nodding in agreement. It was Silas. That's right! Hi, Stast! Clitella may be unfortunate in looks, but at least she's good at studies. You're too hopeless, aren't you? Exactly! Applegandabot! Are you sure Belle is even related by blood to Lillian? Bahi is Rennings, right? The Lint Kidness is all things to me! I'm a Burnishin. As your mom, it's impossible to expect anything cute, so. I hey, cut it out. That's when my Bill stepped in. He turned red-faced and angry, but Silas and Lucy were unfazed. I mean, more shockingly, Silas pulled out his wallet. Lurked to my surprise, Sal was handed a $50 bill to Lillian. Lillian, you're really beautiful. Um, I mean, the show winner in life, too. Because that. Here's some cash from your uncle. Let's get your uncle for just you come for him or not. Your mind is to have a great personality, too. Ella should try to be more stylish, not just study all the time. I guess you're hopeless, considering who your mom is. Who are you sh the cruel words from both her aunt and father quickly filled Bella's eyes with tears. But Silas paid no mind and kept repeating how adorable Lillian wants. Lillian is so lucky to have such a beautiful mom. Ella is the worst luck with her mom. Such dear sack, crazy. Lillian is super happy to resemble her mom. Our family is just unfortunate. Unfortunate? Bella's eyes pleaded for them to stop. Bella sent a silent sue, her tearful eyes unable to voice her feelings. But Silas continued to ignore her, and along with Lucy, kept praising Lillian and belittling Bella. Enough is enough. I shouted louder than I expected, unable to bear Bella's tears anymore. I silently took Bella's hand and left the house in anger. I was so furious. I'll never forgive him. Usually, we would stay overnight at the in-laws' home, but I decided not to stay overnight after such an incident. Soon after returning home, I received continuous calls from my Mile and Bill. My Mile and Bill kept apologizing profusely, but they weren't to blame. Although it was difficult for my in-laws to speak directly to Lucy, they did say something to Silas. He must have been lectured by his parents. But he was still acting nonchalant. Lucy's behavior was infuriating too, but that's for my bill to deal with. But Silas is a different story. He didn't follow us home. Instead, he stayed the night at the in-laws' home. Bella and I talked it over and made a decision. I, the night after the incident at the in-laws' home, Silas finally came back. I'm bad to you. I'm just reaction to just rams. Silas said nonchalantly as he entered the house. Airy to game. Nasty as I didn't welcome him. I just remained silent. 
As expected, he was still in a light mood. He peeked into the living room and asked, Is Bella in her room? Pure back, yeah, yeah, yeah. The very 10 p.m. In the Cindy, she's daddy at her friend's house. That's too late. Silas's words prompted me to have an exaggerated sigh, stand up from the sofa. As I walked to the fridge, I casually mentioned, she's not here anymore. Silas looked puzzled, tilting his head. As I opened a can of beer, I kept Silas in my peripheral vision. The sound of opening the can echoed in the room. What do you mean she's not here? Did she go to a friend's place to stay over? That's exactly what it means. She's not in this house anymore. Now, I was dancing before. What's it, Moon? I get it. I don't get the that. It's my denied. She said she didn't need a father like you and left. Play on a audition. Why is she go, Michelle? How would I know? I replied indifferently. How can you be so calm? Aren't you your mother? As you told me, I'm a disappointing mother. This is joke and joke. Just just a joke. No one take it seriously. I couldn't contain my anger and slammed the can into the sink, making a loud thud. I glared at Silas. A joke something everyone finds funny? What with brass degree is screw you, Jari? I am so serious a churn and that- Your jokes aren't funny at all. Only you and Lucy were laughing. No one else was. How can you call that a joke? That's because you guys are too uptight. Hands. Nisk. How can you call making your own daughter cry a joke? Fine. Why in my breast bear? I find it might motivate her. There's no kid like that in this world. Why if it... But... How she be thizzery, Zabrayer? But... Enough with your butt. But... <laughs> Bella has had enough of what you've done. Has she damaged the tide? Is she abandoning me? That's why she left. Oh my god! I did the ask him. I wondered if he truly didn't understand the gravity of what he had done until now. Such a pathetic sight. His face turned pale as he grasped my arm. I coldly brushed off his refusal. What should I do? That's not my problem. Do you think she'll forgive me if I apologize? The years of what you've done to her have piled up. It's not gonna be that easy. He must have realized the truth in my words. He was at a loss for words. I'll go nick for her. He exclaimed and ran out. At least he's concerned when his daughter is gone. Despite all the times he said we were disappointing. But it's too late now. I watched him leave and then grabbed my bag. The amount of luggage made it seem like I was going on a trip. I had already sent most of my things earlier by courier though. I kept only the essentials with me, but it was still quite a lot. I hefted my bag and left the house, making sure Silas was nowhere in sight, then headed to the main street to catch a taxi. My destination was clear. What the heck? Auntie readily well. Why, why is all your stuff gone? That was the first thing Silas said on the call. They're in from a distance. His loud voice on the phone was painful to hear, ignoring his shouting. I brought the phone back to my ear and replied, Obviously, because I moved it out. There's doubt. A parody of Mermith me. First, faint I wear by Rakrin. His voice was so loud again that I had to pull the phone away. I heard of it. I decided to switch to speakerphone, setting the phone on the table. I took a sip of my coffee before responding. I don't think I need to tell you where. Anyway, I'm leaving too. You'll just have to get by on your own. Goodbye. Why am I first? Are you kidding me? Do you think you'll just do this and get away with it? He yelled. You should be happy. Your disappointing wife is gone. I retorted. I got Faustin, tried side jeans. Yeah, but you ruined my starshirt. I told you it was just a joke. Chove. He's still joking. Just as I was about to raise my voice at his apparent lack of remorse. Dad's jokes aren't funny at all. How can you laugh when you hurt your daughter? Bella shouted at him by my side. Silas was taken aback. Silas called out in panic. Bad, bad situation's right. Are you now with her? Or with a fat? Of course. I am. Mama and I are at my grandparents' home. Bella replied. The grants of ambience. Oh, you mean Mila's parents' home? I'm your son. Yes, exactly. 
Bell if I were at my parents' house in the next district over. I got it! I got it! I got it! I can have no bread! This a talk, okay? Silas said before hanging up. I wondered if he was really prepared for this conversation. As I looked back, I thought about it. Just about ten minutes later, Silas arrived by car, and he was speechless. Why was everyone here? His surprise was understandable. At my parents' home were not only my parents, but also my in-laws, Bill, and even Lucy and Lillian. Just a gathering like this, outside of weddings or funerals, was almost unheard of. Seeing him speechless, I smiled and pointed the floor. Sit here, my parents, myself, Bill, and my in-laws, and Bella and Lillian formed a circle in the middle. Here? Uh, yes, right there. Just with an undeniable force in my smile, he sat down hesitantly. Missy, meanwhile, was sitting outside the circle, all by herself. Well then, do you have anything to say? I did that wrong! Is this the mouth that makes jokes? I pulled his cheek tightly, eliciting a cry of pain. For being his reddened cheek, he said, Because he was just a joke. So this is the mouth that makes jokes, huh? Ouch. I lost my temper at Silas's foolish behavior and took charge. My parents joined the conversation. As what do you think a family is? Aren't you supposed to be the head of the household? Protecting your family? Prayash Rossim. I am protecting them. Silas stammered. I'm probably mocking your daughter and wife. Is that your way of protecting? That's actually caused. Oh, well. Do you do Bencheric Bella? Paris, he shakes by a cheese bride of Ari. I love her so much. <laughs> Is constantly criticizing her and comparing her to others, calling her disappointing, your way of showing overflowing love. Silas was speechless under my father's glare. That's when my in-laws chimed in. My in-laws didn't hold back their words. We must have gone wrong somewhere in raising you. How did I to turn out this way? But our oldest son turned out just fine. It must be his own rotten nature. Indeed, he's always had a tendency to look down on others. We've lectured him countless times, but he never listens. Such a disappointing son. What? Whammy, has great for her. But that's going too far. You've been calling your unwife and daughter that. Not even realizing how hurtful it is to be spoken to like that. You really are disappointing. I'm sorry, your kindnesses. You shouldn't be apologizing to us. The match thing. I badly. That's why I'm das dice. I would draw and get frown. I'm. So I was finally apologized, bowing deeply to me and Bella. But I had no intention of forgiving him. I could let go, but I'll never forgive what he said to Bella. I glanced at Bella, who wore a stoic, expressionless face. Silas's apology clearly didn't resonate with her, and I couldn't help but wryly smile. It seemed Silas realized this too. The band too bossy, questionable. I was wrong too. I was wrong too. What do you mean? Bella's voice was low as she finally spoke. Silas's face turned pale. You think I'm also wrong for being a disappointing daughter? No, I mean not. You prefer Lillian and Aunt Lucy over Mom and me, right? That's not what I mean. We're just the disappointing wife and daughter, right? Wow, I got me come look at. I'm disappointed to have someone like you as a father. A disappointing father like you is just a nuisance. If you like Aunt Lucy and Lillian so much, why don't you go live with them? Why, black basketball? No, that's not what I like. Silas stammered. Lillian then spoke up. I don't want to live with such a disappointing uncle either. The what? What she? Silas was taken aback by Lillian's unexpected remark, but Lillian doesn't stop there. Criticizing your own wife and daughter while favoring your niece, saying your own family is disappointing. That's just unbelievable. Really, you're such a disappointing uncle. Sorry, it's not a mercy. I'm not sorry. I smiled. I hate both you and my mom. I don't even want to see your faces. Lucy was taken aback by her daughter's words. Mom, you always made excuses, saying, but, but even when Dad lectured you, you never really thought you were wrong, did you? You and Uncle Silas are the worst for speaking ill of others. Do you think you're good enough to criticize others? 
It's not just being narrow-minded. In my opinion, both of you are the worst, most disappointing people. Lucy was utterly deflated by these words. And so was Silas, when Bella told him, I hate you too. That's the Jurdio. He slumped his shoulders in defeat. Well, that's how it is. I said, concluding the discussion. Bella and I will stay at my parents' home for now. She can go to school by bus, so there's no problem. Miss Yemenu will come back until graduation. It's not just until her graduation. Are you talking about divorce? That depends on what you do next. Indeed, Silas never anticipated being abandoned by his family. He was left pale-faced and crestfallen. Afterward, my bill reportedly had a stern talk with Lucy. Then, due to her behavior, the decision was made for her to separate from the family. He kicked Lucy out. Lucy's parents are already deceased, leaving her with no place to return to. She now has to live on her own. She's apparently quite shocked, but I doubt she'll change. A divorce seems likely. Lillian, on the other hand, seems quite happy that her mother has left. She smiled at Bella, saying, let's stay close friends, and they hugged each other. As for Silas, he initially bombarded me with apologies via calls and messages, but he backed off after I expressed how annoying it was. After years of ignoring everything I said, his sudden compliance now won't earn him forgiveness. He's been paying child support and living expenses properly, so he'll just have to continue showing his sincerity. However, whether he'll be welcome at Bella's future wedding is doubtful, and if Bella, freed from her father's constant negativity, is now thriving and enjoying her days. Her smile has become more frequent, which makes me happy. I started working and enjoying my days. Soon, I may not even need the money Silas sends. This suggests that, well, I can't help but smirk at the thought.